What's going on guys, Billy here, and I've been shooting with the DJI Mavic 2 Zoom now for the past couple of weeks alongside the Mavic 2 Pro, and I've got to say that I am incredibly impressed with the images that it shoots considering it shares a lot of the same specs of the original Mavic Pro released two years ago. Now before I dive into my camera and gimbal settings that I'm currently using, I quickly want to show you some of the footage I've shot with this drone. In my opinion, they are the best settings to use to achieve cinematic looking footage, and I'm really going to be focusing on the gimbal settings at the end because I think that they are commonly looked over. Now the footage you are watching, just as a disclaimer, was shot in the D cine like color profile, so I added a color grade to give you a sense of what the final product looked like if you use these camera settings and put in the time to color grade your footage after you shoot. All right, so now let's jump into the DJI Go 4 application on our mobile device and begin to go over these camera settings. Now, just as a quick refresher, maybe you're new to flying drones or maybe you just haven't flown in a while. To get to these camera settings, it's the three lines with the three dots just underneath of the record or the shutter button. Now, this first tab has to do entirely with exposure value. It's your exposure settings. And I can't give you guys like the proper values to use for every single time you go out shooting as the lighting conditions will always vary and change depending on when you're flying. But I can give you guys a couple of tips. So first of all, your shutter speed should always be double your frame rate. So let's say I'm shooting 4K at 30 frames per second. I want my shutter speed to be 60. Let's say instead I want to shoot 1080p at 120 frames per second. Well, then I want my shutter speed to be 240. Now, when you set your shutter speed to say 60, the image will get super bright. So what you want to do is add an ND filter to correct that or else you're going to have to shoot at a super high shutter speed. ND filters for this drone are a must as you don't have an adjustable aperture. So that covers shutter speed. Again, remember you want it to be double your frame rate and always keep some ND filters on hand as they will be a necessity when shooting with this drone. Now, one more tip I can give you guys before moving on to the second tab about ISO. Keep it as low as possible when shooting. I mean, if it's a bright sunny day out, there's no reason to bring it higher than 100. You're just adding unneeded brightness and unneeded grain to your image. And that's just gonna further require you to use higher ND filters that you might not have. So like an ND32 instead of an ND16. So bright sunny day, keep this down at 100. But when shooting like at dusk hour or maybe when shooting uh, when it's totally dark outside, you can avoid having to bump that up maybe all the way to 3200. So just kind of play it by ear, but again, Make sure you keep that ISO as low as possible at all times. All right, so now moving on to the second tab of the camera settings marked by the camera icon. This right here, in my opinion, is where the most important camera settings live as it really changes and affects how your camera shoots. So first up, we've got our video size and it should be no surprise, I'm shooting in 4K at 30 frames per second. The video coming off of this drone is just so crisp. I mean, at times, I think it actually looks better than the Mavic 2 Pro footage when they come right off the SD card. I never shoot in 2.7K, I never shoot in 1080p. I like to take advantage of everything the camera has to offer and shooting in 4k is definitely no exception so i'd recommend shooting in 4k it'll just make your footage look so much better now next up we've got our video format and this really all comes down to what you're going to be editing your footage with so if you're going to be editing with a pc flip this over to .mp4 but if you're editing on a mac like myself use .mov it really just comes down to compatibility issues so again pc mp4 mac mov now next up We've got our white balance, and I like to flip back and forth between sunny and cloudy. So sunny is like 5200 Kelvin, I believe, and then cloudy is 5900 Kelvin. I'd stay away from auto as it's going to be shifting that white balance all day as you're shooting, depending on what the camera thinks the white balance should be. And that could be a pain when you're trying to do color correction in post so I'd recommend either flipping between sunny and cloudy. And then at nighttime, you could also use fluorescent, but I don't do too much nighttime shooting. So what I do is when I fly or when I'm shooting in a day, I always choose one, either sunny or cloudy, and I don't change. It just makes my workflow in post-production a lot easier. Uh, next up, we've got our style settings. And with all of my other drones, I've always used zero across the board. I've used these standard style settings, but this time I've bumped my sharpness up one and it seems to be doing the Mavic 2 Zoom, a lot of favors. I mean, the footage looks so crisp. It almost looks unreal in a sense. Sometimes I think I might wanna tone back the sharpness just a little bit, um, but in terms of like the saturation and also the brightness, I leave those on zero. And I found that sharpness plus one gives you the best results. Next up, we've got our color. I always shoot in decent like as this is gonna allow you to get the most out of your footage when you're gonna be color grading it. It's a little bit more saturated than say like a D-Log M color profile from the Mavic 2 Pro or just a straight up D-Log color profile from the Mavic Pro or the Phantom 4 Pro. 
But De Sinelec really does get the job done. I can't complain about it. And as you guys saw in the beginning of this video, that footage color graded looked really good, at least in my opinion. So De Sinelec is always what I go with and normal you can use if you just want to say shoot your video and just share it right off of the SD card and you don't really care that much for post-production or color correcting your footage. Next up, we've got our camera video coding. I want to give you guys a quick warning. If you guys have like an older PC or an older Mac, stick to H.264. I always had trouble when shooting in H.265 when I first bought the Phantom 4 Pro, but now that I have a new laptop, I'm all updated across the board. H.265, this higher efficiency codec, is working great for me, but just take into account what you'll be editing with. If you don't have like the best computer, just stick with H.264. But if you've got something better, like a newer computer and newer editing software, I'd give H.265 a try. Okay, so now moving on to the third tab of the camera settings marked by the gear icon. This is where a lot of the miscellaneous camera settings are housed, and it's quite a long list. So let's start from the top with histogram. I've got this turned on. It's that box you see me moving around on the screen. It gives me an update on my exposure value at a quick glance. So if those mountains are too far to the right, then I'm too far overexposed, or if they are too far to the left, then I am underexposed. So this allows me to take a quick glance at the histogram and make sure that my shot is perfectly exposed. So next up, We've got head LEDs auto turn off. I've got this turned on so that those two front red LEDs will turn off when I'm shooting, whether it be a photo or a video. And this is especially helpful at nighttime. When you go to take photos, those red lights can pop up in the top or at least the red tint from the lights pop up in the top of the frame, totally ruining anything that you shoot. Now next up, we've got lock gimbal when capture. I've got this turned on so that when you're shooting photos, the gimbal lock greatly increasing the sharpness of your photo. And this especially helps when taking long exposure photos. So definitely turn that on if you're a photographer. Next up, we've got enable AFC mode. I've got this turned on so that my camera will automatically focus. This stands for AFC, or I'm sorry, AFC stands for autofocus continuous. So the camera will always stay in focus it is definitely a lifesaver as I don't feel like setting the focus manually as I'm trying to fly and line up my shots. It's just too much. I let the drone focus for me. Uh, next up, we've got overexposed and those are like those red zebra patterns or I'm sorry, the I guess black and white zebra patterns you see across all the areas that are too overexposed. I've got this turned off. I find it to be really annoying. I can tell myself when something is too over or too underexposed, uh, especially just when I look at the histogram. So I've got this turned off. I find it to be a little bit annoying. Uh, next up, auto sync HD photo. I've got it turned on so that the photos I take sync over to my mobile device and I can just look at them in full high definition. Next up, video caption. I've got that turned off. Save original. I've got it turned on so that when I'm taking a panorama or a hyperlapse, it saves all the original photos in raw. I've got raw selected and this allows me to actually edit these on my own and make like my own panorama or make my own hyperlapse in the future. So I've got this turned on and I've got it set for raw for both panorama and hyperlapse. Next up, we've got our grid and I've got this set to none. The grid lines might help when you're trying to like make sure your horizon is fine, but I just shoot. I kind of switch my gimbal on the fly or sometimes I'll fix my gimbal on the fly and then further what I'll do in post is make sure that it's straight by cropping it and zooming in a little bit. So I really don't mess with the grid lines. I find them quite annoying. I've got those turned off. Now in terms of the center points, I find this very helpful, especially when you're trying to like say do a point of interest and you want your camera to be focused on one subject or you're following someone and you wanna make sure they're in the middle of the frame, center points help so much. And I like to use the bracket with the center point. I find that that one looks the coolest. It kinda of makes me feel like I'm in a helicopter, um, but there are a couple of different options to choose from and it really depends on what your preference is. Uh, next up, we have got anti-flicker, which is not available when shooting in manual camera settings or when you have your camera settings set to manual, which I have, so I can't take advantage of that, which kind of sucks. Uh, file index mode, I've got this set to continuous. So basically the way this works is whenever you shoot a photo, that file or a photo or video, that file will get a name. So let's say you take one photo, it gets DJI underscore 0001, and then say you shoot 10 photos, so you're left with 10 files. If you go and you delete all of those photos and you've got this set to reset, then once you start taking photos again, it restarts at 0001. But if you have continuous set, it picks back up right at 11. And I have this set to continuous so that one, I can see how many images I've taken with my drone. I think I'm up to like a couple thousand, which is crazy. But also, you can also make sure that you don't overwrite any footage, which is huge. I mean, if you go to dump a bunch of footage, say in a hard drive or on your desktop, the last thing you wanna do is overwrite any files. 
Uh, so let's see. I think that that is basically it. Uh, peak focus threshold. I've got this turned on. I've got it set to high so that those red lines around the area show me what's in focus and what's not in focus. And this just keeps my mind sane knowing that my drone is actually keeping things in focus. If you turn this to say like normal or low, it shows a little bit too much red and can get distracting just like the zebra pattern from overexposed. So I've got this set to high and it shows me what's in focus. Again, keeps my mind at peace. Next up, we've got our storage location. I always like to shoot to my SD card. The internal storage is there. Um, but again, SD card, probably gonna be your number one bet, but the internal storage has definitely come in handy when I forget my SD card. So that basically wraps up all the camera settings. And next up is the gimbal settings. Now, I really can't stress enough how important it is to set your gimbal settings. Your footage can look beautiful, the colors can look great, but if you don't add any gimbal movement or if you add like too quick of a gimbal movement into your shot, it kind of ruins it. So I guess first up, let's go over how to get to these gimbal settings. We wanna tap on the three dots in the top right corner, and then we wanna tap on the gimbal icon on the left side, brings us to the gimbal settings. And first up, we want that gimbal mode set to follow. So with follow, the drone's camera will always be level with the horizon. It produces that cinematic looking footage. So this is what we want, we want follow. Now next up with our advanced settings, we have the option to change the gimbal mat max pitch speed and also the gimbal pitch smoothness. Now the max pitch speed is how quickly the gimbal moves up and down, and then smoothness is how quickly the gimbal comes to a start and stop. So first up with gimbal pitch speed, let's say we set this thing all the way up to 100. It is just way too quick for my liking. I mean, there is no way you can get nice cinematic looking footage with a gimbal that moves this fast. On the other end of the spectrum, let's say we bump this all the way down to one, it moves entirely too slow. I mean, it is moving so slow that I cannot even look straight downwards if I wanted to. So I've got this set to 15. I find that that's like the sweet spot. It's perfect. It's easy to control. You can bump it up. You can bump it down if you want to try it out. But I find that 15 gives you the most controllable gimbal pitch speed. Now moving on to smoothness, this is something else that kind of irritates me. I've got it set to 15, just like the max pitch speed. If you go all the way up to say 30, it becomes so slow. Like it takes so long to get to that maximum speed that it kind of drives me nuts. Now on the other end of the spectrum, if we go all the way down to zero, it comes to a very abrupt stop. And one thing that might be unknown amongst people shooting with their drone is that you can have that nice gimbal movement, but if it comes to an abrupt stop, it's kind of like, ah. Uh. So I set this to 15 right in the center. I find that this gives me like the perfect amount of smoothness to start off and begin. So if let's say I'm flying forward and I wanna pitch the gimbal downwards, I can do it in a way that's not gonna to be too abrupt or it's not gonna just start and then come to a stop. So those are the gimbal settings I like to use, 15 on both, and then enable upwards gimbal tilt limit to 30 degrees. I've got this turned on so the camera can look upwards an extra 30 degrees if you want it to, but beware as if you do that, you could get the props in the shot. All right, so that was a pretty long video. I hope you guys stuck around towards the end. If you did, thank you so much for watching. And if you just skipped around, thanks again for watching. It really does mean the world to me. I hope that you guys learned something from this video. Make sure you guys pay attention to those gimbal settings. Again, they're always looked over. Try it out, test something that works. I mean, I'm not gonna say that 15 is the best number for everybody. It's the best number for me for the smoothness as well as for the pitch speed. But test it out, try something that feels comfortable for you. And then from there, try to shoot cinematic looking video with it so you can add all these different dynamic movements and make your footage look awesome. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Again, above all, I hope you guys learned something. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.